up, everybody? Welcome back to the SoCal Dram Tram. I'm Matt. And I'm Cesar. And today, before we get into this fancy-looking bottle, we just want to say, if you're new here, hey, we appreciate you stopping by. But did you know that 74% of our views recently come from people just like you who are not subscribed? So be sure to hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. To all of our returning viewers, hey, we appreciate you sticking around. Nonetheless, everybody hit that little bell. That way you know whenever we drop a brand new video. Caesar, I think you've had this. What are we drinking today? Today we got something special from your bar, my friend. That's right. Today we got a fancy yellow label bottle. Today we've got the Colonel E.H. Taylor Small Batch Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. It's bottled in bond. Let's get to it. Hayes, if you didn't know, uh, small batch Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Let's go ahead and get to it. As a founding father of the modern bourbon history, Colonel Edmund Haynes Taylor Jr. left an ineligible legacy. His dedication to distilling began at the close of the Civil War when he purchased OFC Distilling. There, he developed innovative techniques that are still in use today. Made by hand and using some of Taylor's original methods, this small batch bourbon whiskey has been aged inside warehouses constructed by him over a century ago. Barrels were routinely evaluated to identify those with the richest and most complex flavors. A small batch of these selected barrels were then blended together to deliver a distinctive character that is like no other. It is true sipping bourbon that honors the uncompromising Colonel Edmund Haynes Taylor Jr. That's a mouthful. Um, this is one that I'm excited about for a couple different reasons. One, uh, when I found it, I was just kind of like, oh, that's that, that yellow label that I always see for like $100 and it's retail because I found it on the shelf. Why not? I think I spent like 50 bucks on oh this, if my I'm not God, mistaken. That's such a um, I want to say retail is like $49.99, so for an extra 10 bucks, I was okay buying it. Um, so I was very happy to pick it up, but it's just been kind of sitting here on the bar. Uh, and then I showed you, through, I think either through a text message or when you came over for a shoot day, and you're like, bro, you don't even know. You don't even know it's so good. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And like, I'd always heard that it's really good and whatnot. I know they have a variety of different barrels. Uh, I had a chance to win a 18-year uh, marriage cask, uh, which was a very sought-after bottle. Uh, I didn't win it, but that's okay. Um, but, you know, hey, look. I'm always excited to try a new bourbon. I'm always excited to try another Buffalo Trace product, but I'm always like, how different can you be, right? Like at the end of the day, this is still a Buffalo Trace product. So how different is it from the $22 bottle? How different is it from Eagle Rare, right? So I'm excited to get into it, but why don't you tell me a little about your experience when you first had this? No, nah, man, well, first off, I'd like to thank uh, Whiskey Wheelchair Kimmy. Thank you very much. Uh, I would have never had this if it wasn't for her. Uh, one day we went out to dinner. Uh, her, her, her boyfriend, and then uh, a couple or another uh, EJ, uh, another whiskey enthusiast uh, coming from up north. We went to a restaurant. It was really good. They had really good food, and then we tried a bunch of whiskeys. This was one of them, and oh man, let me tell you. And then again, it's fair to say I don't know how far along the bottle was when they when they gave me the the, <laughs> this the, the is bar, <laughs> but but oh let me tell you, man, I was so blown away at it. I was like, oh man, is this what rich people really drink every day? <laughs> I was just like, is this the li life of luxury? Like, do people really drink this every day? Is that how much life is good to them? It's is like, this what wow. liquor store owners are hoarding? <laughs> no, it's like yes. wow, I was blown away that like. This was definitely a bottle that made me think like, man, like people really do live the good life out here. Hmm, for sure, for sure. What yeah. are you expecting? Though? I mean, I, again, I'm expecting bourbon. Uh, for me, like just because it's fresh in my head, again, we bat shoot, you know, the magic's gone. Uh, proof point wise, this is right in line with 101, right? Wild Turkey 101 reviewed that last week. You can check that out up here. 
I have no concept if this is going to taste anything like that, but as far as proof point goes, it's about the same. Um, I'm excited to try it because, again, I've never had an opportunity to have it. Even when I've seen it as a pour in a bar, it's like $50, and I'm like, $50 for E.H. Taylor? No, not for <laughs> a one-ounce pour. I'm good. Uh, but I will take, you know, that Buffalo Trace for, you know, $8. <laughs> but... I am super excited. I love the labeling. I love that it's got that embossed kind of uh, detailing going on. Uh, pretty looking bottle, pretty looking tube as well that it comes in. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to get into it. So without further ado, let's salute and get to it. Colonel. It's brown sugar, folks. It's brown sugar. It's a bourbon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, brown sugar is just punchy. Little, little um, <laughs> is it weird to say fruity ethanol? Like, not orange peel that I get from bourbon, but, like, almost like a strawberry nail polish. <laughs> like, it's really <laughs> weird. Because uh, there, there's definitely some ethanol coming off this glass, but there's also, like, a certain gonna, fruit. I was going to say, though, the ethanol that comes out of this is nowhere near the amount uh, I got from that 101. Like, like the, the overlay of sweetness from the brown sugar definitely uh, overlaps it, like, like a sixth grader beating up a kindergartner. I'm very curious to see what water does to the nose on this, like, for sure. I'm almost even getting like a little bit of like chewing tobacco out of it. That's probably just the oak influence, but I'm going to take a sip while you get to it. I'm going to take another sip. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So initially the forefront, like you put it in your mouth, it's like, oh, here is is a little hot. It's a little, it's a little much right here. But like within a second or two, it's just the overwhelming sweetness and it's just a hugging sweetness. And it's just like, we're here together to dance together into the moonlight up until I'm gone. And then it's, she's gone and then you just want her back. So you just go back for another sip and there she's there for you again for the next dance. So this is definitely a baby girl I can always rely on. Always. <clears throat> really good stuff. What do you think? This is oaky. Um, very oaky. Uh, almost over oaked, uh, at least from my personal preference. Uh, on the palate, I get not nearly as much sweetness as you're getting. Um, it's not, I should preface, it's not saying it's bad, it's just saying it's very oaked for me. Um, I'm very curious on how old the, the whiskey in this bottle would be, like what the age is, but it's definitely like maybe this particular batch is just a little bit like the oak profile came a little bit more forward. Um, uh, but it, again, by no means am I saying it's bad. It's just saying that of the Buffalo Trace lineup that I've had, I don't know if I'd be reaching for this right away on the second pour. So, so here's the thing. So I'm, Again, I'm still excited about it. No, so you know how this is the second time I've had it, right? Mm -hmm. The first time I had it at that restaurant, and it's, it's, to be honest, I was actually telling him this before we started shooting. I was like, I don't know how this is going to hold up because I don't know where the bottle was when I tried it at the restaurant. When I had it at the restaurant, it was so overwhelmingly sweet. Like it was just so sweet and then it had character too. So it was it was sweet, but not sweet, too sweet to where you thought it was like cheap candy. It was sweet enough and then the boldness came, but the boldness was a great flavor too to write it down. And I would that that's what made me blown away by it. So it really makes me think that maybe that bottle was a little bit halfway down. But it also lets me confirm that I know when we get this one a little bit lower, it's for sure going to open up the other way. Because I've had it. I've had it where, where it tasted like really, really uh, sweet. Like o overly sweet over the, the punchiness of the alcohol. For so sure. on a scale of, you know, 1 to 10, let's say, right? If that last bottle you had was sweet, like 1 to 10, 10 being the most sweet, 1 being the most bitter, where would that land? The last bottle that you had. So the the last one I had was probably like an 8 and a half. Where would this rank? This is probably like a 6. Really? Okay, yep, so that, not that it, big of a difference. Well, I mean, it's different enough to say that it, it's, it's a big difference when you go down because a 60% over an 85% is, I think, it, there's enough of a difference there. But... Um, to be honest, if I would, if I only had that, that dram that I had before and I had a chance to rate it at that specific dram, I would have rated it a five, like without a question, like no questions asked. I would have been like, all right, this is a five. Like this would be a six if I could, like, <laughs> dude, it was, wow, it's a it, six for you? It, it, at that moment, because of how much I think down it was in the bottle, 
it was crazy good mm. like it blew and it wasn't just me it, there was four people at the table and each person had had it too and each person said the same thing each person was like this is the one we're going to put to the side and we're going to drink all the other ones and then we're going to enjoy the crap out of this one when it goes down i will say this i put some water on it and i'm getting a little bit more sweetness out of it for sure um, Maul's getting like when you open up a package of red vines, like licorice, <laughs> like that that burst of like chemical red licorice yeah. is kind of what I'm getting, uh, which is not offending to me because I actually really like red vines. It's my movie theater snack of choice, um, but definitely sweeter with the water. So I have a feeling I'm gonna like this one with water a little bit, but I'm gonna get into it. How many drops you put in? I only put three drops, but and uh, to be fair, my favorite movie theater candy is Crunch. <laughs> better with the water um a little bit sweeter still a little spicy on the finish for yeah sure. i get some spice um, on the finish. for me better with the water and maybe that's just because it's a neck pour i don't know my initial thoughts on a score um don't pay a hundred dollars <laughs> like do not pay more than hundred dollars for this. Like I, I personally, me, I'm not paying any more than fifty dollars for this. Now that I've had it, uh, and I kind of know what to expect. Now, would I be interested in trying a single barrel? Absolutely. Would I be interested in trying, uh, you know, some of the other ones that they offer? Absolutely. Because if I'm not interested in trying those, why are we running a whiskey channel? <laughs> that said, though, this particular bottle, just their standard small batch whiskey. Uh, don't spend more than fifty. I if I could get this at thirty nine ninety nine, I buy that again. But like at fifty, uh, maybe I'll grab something else. Um, and again, neck pour. Who knows? Maybe as it goes down, we revisit this, and I'm like, holy crap, this is amazing. I've seen the light. Uh, we salute you, Colonel. Uh, but as of right now, two and a half. Two and a half out of five for me. Damn. Um, yeah, it's it's not really living up to much uh, for me. And again, I've always heard like this thing, you know, has a swinging cod. That this thing is like, you know, hey, what's going on? I'm here to play, and I'm kind of like, eh, it's fine. Like honestly, I would say just recently, right? Just recent whiskeys we've had that I'm like, I would drink that over this any day. Eagle Rare, number one. I drink that over this any day right now again this may evolve who knows yeah um i would also say that breckenridge that we did which you can check out up here i would drink that over this that has more of my flavor profile i think for anybody who's on the hunt for this and you happen to identify with some of my tasting notes maybe skip this one or maybe if you can get a pour at a bar for a reasonable price try before you buy again for me right now and i'll put a little asterisk at it because maybe it'll change two and a half out of five so I almost guarantee this is going to be like that Angel's Envy Caribbean cask. Because uh, when we opened that, we both liked it. We both thought it was great. We both thought it was sweet. Now it's halfway down, and we're like, dude, this is maple syrup. We're drinking maple syrup. <laughs> I, I almost guarantee that's what's going to happen only because, I hope so. only because of my past experiences. Like, I, I know what you mean right now, and I can see where you're rating it because it's, there's so much hype behind it. And I told you, I was like, it was really good. But even right now, I'm not enjoying it nowhere near, nowhere near as much as I did that first time around. So that's why I, I could almost safely say, I pretty much guarantee when it goes down halfway, it's gonna be a bottle that just blew up. So only because I've had that past experience, I'm already at a four. If, oh, if, damn. Yeah, yeah, no, because I know, I know what this bottle can do because I have experienced it personally. And in that experience, it was so mind blowing that even though it's not the greatest right now, I'm still gonna rate it a four because I know it's gonna get there. I know it's gonna get to a five, 100%, and I know I'm gonna enjoy the crap out of it. Uh, so Colonel, Colonel E. Taylor, just like this Colonel led his army to greatness, just like my bucks this weekend will lead to greatness versus the Rams, because I'm going to that game. That's right, baby, go bucks all day, every day. Uh, he did a great job. My bucks are gonna do a great job. 
It's a four out of five. Well, for the long-term fans that have been sticking with us for close to two years, you know this is not the first time Steve has worn a Bucks jersey. Yeah. And I'm here to go ahead and back him up. I am not a sports ball fan, guys. I, I don't ball. follow sports. Uh, Caesar is a Bucks fan. It wasn't like Brady just showed up and he's like, yeah, go Bucks. He was a Bucks fan when they were losing. Oh, yeah. So all you people in the comments who are trying to give him shit right now, nah, I ain't having it because this man has been through some losses. Yeah. He, got, he got Brady and he's like, now we're just reaping the benefits. Yeah. <laughs> Because exactly. <laughs> that man can build a house in 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. But nonetheless, folks, hit us up down in the comments. What do you think of Colonel E.H. Taylor? Is there another one we should try to seek out? Am I crazy? Is Caesar on point? <laughs> Who knows? Also, be sure you hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We love interacting with you there. Again, though, folks, we've almost been doing this for two years. Can you believe it? Check out all these reviews. We're coming up on Review 100. Let us know what you want us to see for that review. You got anything else you want to add? Yeah, if I buy an Eagle Rare, are you down to trade it for this? Hell no! <laughs> buy it off $55. <laughs> Stay safe and drink well, folks. All aboard. That'll be $55, please. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Hope you liked that video. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications. And don't forget to subscribe.